Mā tini mā mano, karapa te whai. Many hands make light work. E ngā iwi o te motu, nau mai anō ki te hōtaka nei a te ahikā. Ko au tēnei, ko Justin Murray. Ko Maraia Rakaraku tēnei, and this is Te Ahikā on Radio New Zealand National. He aha nā kaupape e whai ake nei. What's coming up, Justine? Well, as you've heard Whānau Ma in previous shows, we've featured coverage of the 2011 Nga Taonga Toi a Te Waka Toi. We started with the rangatahi and now we're on to Kaumatua doing their thing in their communities. While more is known about intellectual property and its impact upon the rights of Indigenous people today, 20 years ago it was still a relatively new consideration. Yet, even so, six individuals recognised its future significance and the need to protect Indigenous rights to traditional knowledge when they lodged a claim with the Waitangi Tribunal. One of the claimants was Sana Murray, who will feature in Te Ahika today from an archival recording in 1988, which shows how these issues were at the forefront of her mind. Elders had, at the Harper had wished to share with the children the future children that will possibly gain knowledge and better their standards of living from knowing the past. Sana Murray talking at the Ethnobotany Nga Mahi Māori o Te Waunui a Tāne Hui held at Te Rehua Marae Christchurch in 1988. The Waitangi Tribunal usually hears cases relating to Treaty of Waitangi breaches or grievances, but the groundbreaking Y262 flora and fauna claim was different. It was the first time an historical claim referred not to an alleged breach, but to wider law and international conventions. This goes to explain its complexity and why it took 20 years to finish. Y262 was lodged in 1991 by six individuals representing their respective iwi, Ngāti Kuata, Ngāti Kuri, Ngāti Wai, Te Rarawa, Ngāti Paro, and Ngāti Kahunganu. The last remaining claimant was Ngāti Kuri woman Sana Murray, who died a few weeks ago. In this archival segment from 1988, she's talking at the Ethnobotany Ngā Mahi Māori o Te Waunui Atane Hui, Māori Environmental Practices, held at Te Rehua Marae, Christchurch. To begin, Sana explains in Te Reo Māori that she is from Te Hiku o Te Ika, the tale of the fish, and Te Reringa Wairua, the far north, Te Hapua. She then acknowledges the tangata whenua of the marae and her elders that have travelled with her to Te Rehua Marae. She explains that she travelled there in an aeroplane along with her elders. She then greets the Paipai Tapu, the kaumatua of the marae, and acknowledges those that have gathered. Tenano ko to kato. Sana Maria hau. Mo te hiku tika te rerenga wairua. Mihi ake na kite tanga to fenu. Mihi ake na kite kainga hi ko i mai to kutupuna. Te ra o na nai. Kalere mai matu. ドメテワカレレラニメテトゥプナキャトゥタキアウェイルチャコトゥカトナレレアロハナキンガコレロトパイパイアンガランガチライミヒアヒロイトマライアロハナキンガカウパパカトアコホラニエムヤタトナレ
he had asked that I had come down for my brother and myself and his wife and my daughter to come down and share with you what our elders had at the Harper had wished to share with the children, the future children that will possibly gain knowledge and better their standards of living from knowing the past. So I will have to refer to a very prominent speaker last night, Dr. Chipene Leach. And I do believe what he says is very relevant today about the spiritual side. We do accept the spiritual side of life has always been here. If it wasn't for that spiritual strength, our ancestors probably wouldn't have had the courage to come over this wide expanse of the Pacific Ocean. They had science then, science of the heavenly bodies. So, one of those canoes had landed at the tip of the north. And that canoe today, there is a stone to commemorate the landing place of that canoe, Kurahopo. It is in the area of the North Cape. It stayed there for a while and then came down further down at Tupuna, <coughs> Po Hurihanga. As his canoe was turning round the North Cape, Kaki te Tupuna, Ko Muri Hena, Ko Muri Ote Hena, he exclaimed, This is the end of the land. But today we say the top of the land, Te Hiko Tika or the tail.